Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to Old Roommates. Today on the show is a special music video episode where we revisit We Are the World and Do They Know It's Christmas. So grab your favorite Jackson and get ready for this. Welcome, everyone. It is Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. I am Christina. And I am Brian, and we're still in quarantining and social distancing. Yeah. And weirdly enough, we did not plan this. We're both wearing like an olive green. Yeah, that's right. If I, you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see that. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I, I, do, I feel a little disheveled. I don't, sort oh my of gosh, rough. you kind of remind me. It doesn't look like this at all, but the way oh. you just moved... Do you see, ever see that commercial where they're on a date and they're like, you look great. And the girl's <laughs> like, you look amazingly comfortable. My <laughs> <laughs> t-shirt's you're, you're, all like No, worn. you look great. You look okay. great. It all does right. not have that same collar as the commercial because that's oh, okay. what the whole commercial right. was about. But it just, the way you just moved was kind of funny. Oh my gosh. So, so anyway, so we are talking about two amazing videos that were done for charity that's right so we need to remember that however we are only reviewing the music videos this is yes. no bearing on the charity there's no philanthropic you know situation here we are simply revisiting these to see as you usually do if nostalgia beats quality mm -hmm. what what are what is the quality do we remember them as fondly as we did mm -hmm. um, or do we like them better right Right. So I this mean, is all there's, no, there's no assuming that we liked the videos to begin with, right? I said this before and I'll say it again. I always want to like stuff because mm -hmm. it's our time and we're going back in time. You want to, I want to like everything we, re, we revisit. Um, so we, we're going to start with We Are the World. Okay. <laughs> are you laughing? I'm laughing at I you mean because I'm just thinking about Dire Straits and you're like, I always like everything. I'm like, nope. Well, I, it's not, no, it's I a different want, podcast. People can listen to that episode. I want to like everything. Right, you do want to like everything. Yeah. That's true. So, all right, so We Are the World. Christina, 1985, We Are the World. Yeah. What, what do you remember? What, do you, what was your take then? Um, so, We Are the World, I was in high school, and it, I was, I feel like I was right in, like, that time. I feel like it was a good time to be in that moment like high school like you're all about music right you're like really interested in music and everything else more so i think than other times in your life um i don't know for me at least in, especially with the 80s i guess but um so i remember this 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 video and the song um i remember it being like just an amazing deal like it was just such an amazing thing that happened and it still kind of blows my mind to think about it and think about all of the different people that were involved and how they got everybody together and it was like it was really i think one of the first times it, there was a a combined effort from celebrities to raise money for something i don't remember anything aside from the other video that we're talking about today but I, I don't remember another time where people actually did this. Like this is all the beginning of like all this like comic um, comic relief, relief. efforts yeah. and all this. It was this was really like the first time someone did this for a charity, and I thought it was so cool, so mm -hmm. so cool. And I will tell you one of my first one of my memories of this, which was it still kind of blows me away today, and it, had, it doesn't have to do with the video. So, but it does have to do with the song. They, um, I remember after they released it, there was a day that all radio stations planned to play this song. It was a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. And it was like this big movement um, across all the radio stations and everybody agreed to play this song at 11 o'clock on, on a Saturday morning. And um, it was like this huge thing. And I think even MTV might have played the video at 11 o'clock as well, but I didn't watch it. What I did do is I did tune in to the radio stations and I remember listening to whatever it was, HTT or COZ or whatever. And I remember the DJ saying, hey, you know, we're 
it's 11 o'clock. And it was a very well-known thing that was going to be happening. And I remember the DJ saying, do us a favor, you know, as you're listening, just turn the dial across and listen to this, you know, united front of, you know, charity or whatever that we're all doing. And I did that. And I remember, I mean, they didn't all start exactly the same time. So it was a different po point, but it was the coolest thing to do that, to be able to go through. And this is like, everybody listened to the radio then. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like, you know, it was something that we always did. But just, I remember there was a couple of like, there was like, I think there was like, a Spanish radio station that didn't do it. And then there was like a classical station that didn't do it. But there was so many. Those bastards. Did. I know, seriously, right? <laughs> Who do they think they are? So anyway, so that is my memory of We Are The World. I remember watching the video many, many, many times because it was always so cool to see everybody in one spot and just like all the different voices. And it was just, it was awesome to me. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it too back then. I um, so I was I guess twelve or thirteen, and um, and I remember just thinking it was like almost like the Laugh Olympics. Remember the cartoon, the Laugh Olympics, where like <laughs> yes. it's all the different uh, cartoon characters like together as one. And yes. it was like and just, but I remember like I remember the lockups. Like before I rewatched this, I watched this last night at like one in the morning. Uh -huh. But like I remembered like Huey Lewis was with. Cindy Lauper and Kim Carnes. Well, I remember when you think about the song, you sing it in that in their voices. In those voices, they have distinct voices. You really do. It's really. It was really something. I loved it so much. I had the forty-five, as the rest of the world did. Mm -hmm. It was really a moment, and um, and I loved. Yeah, I loved the video. It was. It was exciting. Like the video was, and it. Re I mean. I mean, thank God, you know, if you're old, you're old, and you're old enough to remember that it's like, you know, you, it starts with the, the spinning globe yep. and it opens and um, it was such a big deal. All of like Michael Jackson's in the booth and Diana Ross and Bruce Springsteen and like it was beyond and it was such a cool thing. I think also to be, I think, in our, in our age, because like you're, it's even more impressive. I don't like, I, I don't know. Cause like you're like, to your point, you're going to appreciate music, like artists, like music artists and you're yes. into music. And yeah, it was just, it was such a cool thing. And it it's was, still, yeah. it's still cool. I mean, it's still like really impressive to see all of these people in one room it's singing incredible. together. It's incredible. Yeah. I don't think we could do that now. I really don't think we well, could do that now. Who would care? Like who right? would care? I mean, and I think, but I think that's because I'm older now. So it's like, I mean, if someone said, oh, Katy Perry, Beyonce, uh, Demi Lovato, Ariana Grande, and so-and-so are all getting together to sing the song, I'd be like, that's cool. Like, but here's the I, thing. If it happened today, it would be just those people. It wouldn't include Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. I mean, obviously, the dead people wouldn't be there. But, but like, the, the real, like, classic musicians. Are there any that are still alive? Bob Dylan, um, you know... Diana no, but Ross. I guess what I'm saying is, I guess what I'm saying is, and it's just a sign of the times. I mean, it's like, like the people in 84, 85 were in that room. I mean, it wasn't like, they yeah. weren't digging anyone up from like, uh, you know, it, I actually think, weren't, weren't they going right from the Grammy Awards to that studio? So I think so that's like, a it was rumor. Were, uh, I think uh, that's a rumor because I had thought that too and I, and I looked it up. Yeah. And they actually, it didn't, they weren't coming from uh, the Grammys. Um, that was like a rumor to be like, oh, that's the only way we're going to get everybody in the same room, right? Oh, okay. But no, they were actually sent um, a cassette. It was like this big, huge top secret thing. And um, they had they had to meet at like eight o'clock in some like remote, remote area. Everyone was supposed to be there. They, um, there was, um, it, it was, it was really, really top secret because the people who organized it, who was it? Her, was it Harry Belafonte? No, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones produced it. Um, but they, um, they were afraid that people like Prince or Michael Jackson or like Bob Dylan, if they showed up and there was a big crowd, then they would not be, they wouldn't go. Like they wouldn't show up. So it was um, very top secret and like sworn to secrecy and all this kind of stuff. Um, Prince never actually ended up showing up, by the way. Right. Sheila E was there. Sheila E was there. there. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's like amazing how many people were there. But anyway, yeah, um, Michael Jackson did show up first and he recorded before everyone else showed up. But he was also one of the writers. Did you know he and Lionel Richie wrote the song? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, he and Lionel Richie wrote it and it was produced by Quincy Jones. Um, but so he showed up first to record separately and then he was in with the group sh chorus lines. So, okay. Anyway. So what are your takeaways now? When did you rewatch this? So I rewatched it, I think it was like a few days ago. It was like yeah. maybe like Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. Um, my thoughts now on this video, um, I'm still quite amazed by it. I'm mostly amazed at how all of these big egos agreed to the parts that they had. Um, and because one of the things that bothered me then and bothers me now is there are literally, let's see, so the song goes on forever, um, but there are Stevie Wonder and Bruce Springsteen. Okay, so for the most part, everybody has like one line, right? And then somebody sings a different line and then they sing together. So they have probably one solo line and one line with a duet. A smaller or group, whatever, yeah. Right, or a trio. Right. That's right. Except Bruce Springsteen and Stevie Wonder. They have the regular stuff going on, but at the end, they sing two entire verses together. Do you, you wrote that down? Christina, yeah. I was like, Bruce and Stevie. This is, I wrote, this is way too long. Give someone else four seconds. Two entire Kim, verses. Kim Carnes says two words. She goes, when we, and then they're all like, yeah. stand together as one. And it's like, give, they know Bette Midler was Bette there. Midler has no solo. She has nothing. You don't Oates even see, you see for have a, a solo. Second. Hall no. has a, a, a line, Oates <laughs> doesn't. The, the Pointer Sisters did, did not have a line. Now we're digging in. And this Spokey is when it, this pisses Robinson me Robinson did not off. have a line. This pisses me off so bad. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen, and I am sorry, I'm gonna go to hell for saying this, but I thought when I was younger, I was like, you know what? I can't wait till I'm older so I can appreciate what the fuck Bob Dylan is about. Mm. Because I can't stand his voice. I am so sorry if you're a Bob Dylan fan. But when he comes up, you might as well. He was like, me, blah, 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 blah. It's and like, a choice we're making. But it's not. But then he's like, <laughs> it's true. We make a better day. Like, it's like. I'm trying but to that is his Muppet, style. So I have what to. What Muppet does he sound like? I, mean, I respectfully so... disagree. <gasps> I'm a bit. I'm a Bob Dylan fan. Bye now. And... Bye. <laughs> I'm a Bob Dylan fan. I I love his music. I love his songwriting, and I think that yes, his voice is um. There's a little something to be desired there, but um. But it it's him, and it's it's that's who he is, and that's how he sings, and it works well with his songs, um because you know he's written those songs or oh, whatever but i do agree that it's it's a little bit weird but th i think the reason why it kind of works is because like i said you when you're singing these songs you're singing them in the voice of that particular <laughs> person right even cindy right. lauper wah, 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 wah! you know like i mean this is like this is who they are so i appreciated right. bob dylan doing doing his part and not trying to sound like someone else like he's singing as he is and sure. i think it's the way it should be um bruce springsteen however you know like we are the world it I always mean, looks like, like you know what let me tell you something and i know there's a lot of Bob. i know there's a lot of bruce i love bruce springsteen fans. it always looks like he's taking a dump Every yeah. time he's singing, it's like he's constipated and he's like, oh, yeah. it's true. And, blah, blah, blah. and his eyes, and he closes his eyes, and it's like, we are Come the on. world. We yeah. are the children. Yeah. Oh my God. Children. Just push it out and be done. But I appreciated him. Push it out. Own... <laughs> push it out. Push it out. <laughs> it's, this is taking a turn. I'm sorry. I've been quarantined for a long time. I'm not going to censor myself now. Um, oh God! But anyway, so I that that bothered me with the the two whole verses because actually when I was watching it again today, I mean the other day, I'm like I'm the I remembered them. He Stevie and Bruce had this long long time, 
And I'm like, oh my God, it's an entire verse. And I wrote down an entire verse and then they did another one. <laughs> no, I know. No, it goes, it's long. Who agreed to this? It's long. Well, they did. But, but why? <laughs> like, but why then? And I asked, you know, and I was talking to Matt a little bit about it. And yeah. he's like, well, Bruce Springsteen was like a huge star. Boy. He was. He was. He was born in the USA, never... that whole album. But still, like, it should have been, if you want to have a special thing for Bruce, one, one verse is plenty. That's a lot. And he had his other line, too. I was shocked at how male heavy. That's what I thought you were going to say. All the, all the solos, like those moments you're talking about, yeah. it's Lionel Richie, it's Stevie Wonder, it's Bruce Springsteen, it's Bob Dylan, um, it's um, uh, even Jeffrey Osborne. Jeffrey has Osborne, a, holds yeah. a whole, He has a whole stretch. And it's like, where are the women? Like yeah. Diana Ross is, I think Diana Ross is the only one that gets that real moment. Mm. Um, but then you have, but I'm telling you, some of the best um, setups for me, I loved Billy Joel singing with Tina Turner. Oh, and I love yeah. I wrote them down. Um, Deanne Warwick singing with Willie Nelson. And Deanne Warwick's, Deanne Warwick's voice, holy shit. She, I could have, I could have stand another 10 seconds with her instead yeah. of the Bruce and Stevie thing. There was a but lot also you yeah. have Bette Midler, you have the Pointer Sisters, and you throw them with everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what, how did that happen? Who made it's these very choices? Strange. It's very strange how that happened. And maybe, I mean, but I mean, I feel like- Ben Midler, because that point, Midler, Bette, was she- The, she the Rose had happened, the Rose had happened. The Rose was a huge hit. She yeah. won um, some, a Golden Globe. She had won Best New Artist, I think. But that was in the 70s, right? The no. Rose was so in the late 70s. Rose was 79, yeah. but the awards, where the eight was, was 1980. Yeah. So she was, so this is 85, but her, her say star was really only going up. She had but some, was it though? Because I remember with Bet, I feel like she's ebbed and flowed a lot. Like yeah. she's been really high and then really low. And her I wonder if that's movies, what I'm thinking of. Maybe. She had a shitty, she had a shitty run um, because no one wanted to work with her in movies because she was mm -hmm. a diva with, when she came to acting and movie making. But I think, I believe she had a couple of hit albums. I, if, yeah, I think so too. But I, I wonder if, if it's this time frame, like maybe this is at a lower point in her popularity. Well, she was one of the few people in that room to have a Grammy. So I feel mm -hmm. like they could have so given- It's so weird, I know. She didn't, Christina, she didn't even have, like Kim Carnes was with Huey Lewis. And I like, actually, actually like that lockup. Yeah, that was although, a good lineup. And it was a third one. Who was the third one in that? Cindy. Cindy oh, Lockup. Cindy, of course, yes, yes, yes. But what I thought was funny about that, and I'm jumping all, I'm jumping all around. It's, okay. it's like, Shallow like Kim Carnes steps back mm -hmm. when Cindy steps forward. And I just wondered like, what is going through Kim Carnes' mind right now? Is she like, okay, Cindy, like enough? Like, do you think there's anyone in that group who is not having fun? Like, who do you think was like, oh God, I'd hate to be that, um, that one? <laughs> I think there's probably a few, like Diana Ross, I think yeah. was probably like, why am I not singing the whole song? Apparently there was a sign on the door when they came in that says, check your egos at the door. Oh. Apparently. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. But, um, but I feel like, I don't know. Who else would do like that? Um, I don't know. But I think her, I don't know, Tina Turner maybe. Oh, I always, I never heard she had diva issues. She strikes me as a little bit of a diva, but I don't really yeah. know. I, 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 do, I will say, I thought they led, like leading with Lionel Richie, his voice is amazing and it brings mm -hmm. you right in. I mean, as, that's kind of more of a song note mm -hmm. than a music video note. But um, yeah, but I mean, that's, I, that's all. I just think like there were some really missed opportunities with this and I completely agree that Bruce Stevie thing went on way too long Two to the detriment. Two entire voices and those are long, long verses. Yeah, they are, yeah. And it was, the song itself is very, very long. It's I think it was minutes. like five minutes or something, was it? No, it's eight. Oh, it's, it's eight, eight minutes, eight, eight minutes. I think minutes the other one was talking about was five. It's like super long. But it's very, very long. And the last, I mean, it's probably like four minutes of just the verses, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the chorus, I'm saying verses. Right, 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 right. Like the chorus. Um, but yeah, crazy long. 
Um, and yes, I would actually, I, I would actually accuse Lindsay Buckingham of lip syncing. Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Lindsay Buckingham. Um, and, and the most bizarre, bizarre turn of, the, of events, you're, you're panning out and you're looking at like, oh, I know him, I know him, I know him. And see, it's like so fun to do that. You have to watch yeah. it a few times to get everybody. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say Dan Aykroyd. Dan yeah. Aykroyd. Where did he come from? I don't know. Isn't that hilarious that yeah. he's there? Like he knew somebody. He probably just accidentally like knocked on the door. I was like, oh, what's going on here? Well, but he, he's a blues brother. He was a blues brother. Yes. But I mean, was that that popular that they're going to be in included in this like with Stevie Wonder and Kenny Rogers and Steve Perry, like, is he really on that level? Oh my God, Steve Perry sounded so good. It um, made me so sad. I oh. missed him just hearing his line. I'm like, oh, yeah. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple more things, unless you had something else to add. That was that's all I have. A couple more things. Um, so like I said before, Prince was invited, but he never showed up. Allegedly, it was because someone said that he was creepy. Somebody had met him described him as creepy so he was like fuck you and uh, didn't show up but he did record a track for the album like his own track for the album called tears in your eyes which i never heard of i'm kind of curious as to hear what that is about also you know who else was invited that turned them down whitney oh no good guess eddie murphy My eddie God. murphy was invited but he turned them down because he was recording party all the time and he's, he has since regretted that choice. Oh, good. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there's 45 musicians participated, 21 soloists. Um, and it raised over $63 million. Wow. And in today's standards, it would be equivalent to $147 million. So Okay. I don't know. That's, I did a lot of research on this, obviously. Um, good for you. And yeah, so... They did get a music, a video viewer's choice award or something. For, it didn't win any Grammys? Um, yes. It got record of the year and best pop performance. They got okay. Grammys. Um, but we were just talking about the video though, right? Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Jeez, Christina. Well, I, I, um, I have been, you know, chastised for that. <laughs> just thought I would Should do we a take a break? Chastising. Should we take a break and come back with the other one? Yeah, let's take a break and come back with, uh oh, my mouse is Do good. they oh, know it's Christmas? So, yes, we'll be right back. Cool. And we're back. You're back. Old roommates talking about We Are the World, and now we're talking about Do They Know It's Christmas? Mm -hmm. um, 1984. Christina, any memories of this song or, or um, video? I, you know what's funny? I don't remember the video as much as I remember the song, to be yeah. honest. But I remember loving this song. I really loved this song when it came out. And I still, when I hear it, obviously it's played more at Christmas now. Um, you obviously hear it more than you do We Are the World, for sure. It still gives me that like, aw, I like this. You know, um, I, I always liked it. In fact, I, I remember being a little bit annoyed at We Are the World when they came out with, the, with their little version because I felt like they were trying to best them. Do you know what I mean? Like they were trying to be like, oh, well, look what we can do in America, um, where this is more of a UK thing. But I, um, I don't remember much about the video from then, but um, I did like the song. What about you? Yeah, I remember, <clears throat> I don't remember the video, very, I didn't remember the video very well at all. Um, and so I was 12. And um, yeah, I have to be honest, I don't even know if I would have, I don't think I even knew I mean, besides say like, I guess George Michael and Boy George, but I don't think if you were like, who's that? Who's that? I don't think I would have known that many more people. I wasn't as worldly with my musical tastes when I was 12. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I think the song, the song has grown on me over the years. I didn't, wasn't a huge fan of it younger, uh, if we're just talking about the song, but, um, but it does, it's one of those things, because they only played at Christmas, really. It, right. it, there's a, you know, nostalgic fondness to the song now. Um, but re-watching the video again last night, um, I, uh, for me, the thing that mm -hmm. stuck out, and I definitely didn't remember this years ago being younger, but like, 
do you know that everyone was any, all the so almost every single soloist besides the thing boy george sang with their eyes closed oh my and I was gosh like, Are you, you're trying a little too hard like you interesting like, <laughs> it was super weird i'm like what you can't sing with your eyes open what's that about <laughs> like how like how soulful are you trying to be in this moment it was just weird. It was it's weird. Really funny. I didn't notice that at all. Um, when I rewatched it again, I don't really remember that much about. I mean, a tiny bit. I could cut. If you had asked me to describe it, I probably could have re maybe recalled a few things. Um, but I, when I rewatched it a couple days ago, I remember. I just was thinking, wow, this is actually kind of a cool video. Like I actually appreciated it more. And I watched it after We Are the World. Mm -hmm. I appreciated it more for it's almost like it's rawness. Um, it, it reminded me more of almost like a, a garage band kind of like rehearsing in their, you know, garage or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like they were having more fun than the We Are The World video. And I hate to compare it that way, but I couldn't help we but compare. We have to because you know one, one of them's going to make the vault and one's not. But Christina, I have that same note that they're <laughs> laughing. In, there's a couple things where they're like laughing and like they're like having like a good time. But should they have been? I think that they were. I don't know. Like, why were they supposed to be depressed because they're raising money for the Ethiopia? Like, what do you mean? Well, were they not that, supposed to have fun doing that? Well, I mean, if you think about like. At Christmas time, it's hard, but when you're having right. fun, like remember them, and then and then towards the end, it's like, like I think there's so many people lip syncing. No one's looking at the camera. They're all like looking at each other and pointing and laughing. And I'm like, wait a minute, it, what is the tone of this? Because it starts off very soulful and mm -hmm. closed eyes and and somber, and then the end, they're just like like shitting around like it's well, like it's supposed to be is it supposed to be like uplifting like what's the i guess maybe I guess, clearly that's up for interpretation christina it is up for interpretation so for me i felt like it was more of like a video like a video like an mtv video like um you know I, they were it was not they were not recording it, it wasn't like a live recording of them singing they did the recording and then they obviously dubbed the song over it in my opinion i don't know if that's mm -hmm. for true for, for, for true i don't know if that's real <laughs> but um that's what it seemed like to me like it was just a produced video and then they put the song on top of it and they obviously tried to line up the the people singing yeah um, but i felt like it was fun and I, I felt like it was a little more authentic, to be honest. Okay. In that, I think that is what happens when people are recording a song, regardless of what the tone is supposed to be. Like, are you supposed to, like, I think when they're, when musicians are recording, they're having a good time sometimes um, and enjoying what they do. And they have like that passion. And I bet it was a lot of fun for them to be recording with, other musicians like i felt like there was almost like a friendship between uh, the other musicians and they were they were they came together for like the good of the people as opposed to the we are the world video i feel like they were all there because well so and so is doing it so i have to do it like almost like a more selfish kind of reason maybe because okay. they didn't want to be excluded from this huge production um, I definitely, it was just, it was two complete distinct, distinctly different feels to these two videos. Um, I, I do feel like, I feel like the tone was right for We Are The World. I don't feel like the tone is right for this. Um, I, I just feel like if you think about, say, Mariah Carey and Boys to Men with One, One Sweet Day, uh -huh. which is about like the people they've lost to, I believe, AIDS. And like if you imagine like the b-roll of that and they're all like you know kidding yeah. around and cracking jokes and laughing like I, i'm like well that that would be really weird and i feel like it did bother me with do they know it's christmas i think there's a lot of lip syncing some people weren't taking it seriously and i did notice it i will say there's some positives okay uh, but maybe one <laughs> 
I, I'm looking at my notes at the same time and I'm realizing I really didn't like this very much. But um, <laughs> the one positive I have, yeah. Sting. Mm-hmm. Sting. Sting. I never, back then at 12, certainly didn't have feelings for Sting. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, Sting's hot. He In was this- way hotter <laughs> than I remembered him yes. being. Those He's lips, hot in this. Those lips. Oh my God, he has like a Jude oh. Law. And he has like a Jude Law, like, like kind of like almost like little Euro trashy, like yeah. bad boy. The hair, the hair he, looks so hot. I don't, I, I wonder if he's ever looked, his 80s Sting, mm. very, he could get it. Like mm-hmm. very, very, very hot. Um, but honestly, here's my other problem. Where are the women? Like, yeah, no that was interesting. Banana, I think Banana Rama was there. Banana Jody Rama. Wat, Jody Watley. Where, where are they? Like, they're just thrown in. All of the solos are men. And you know what yeah. really pissed me off is at the end. There, so and at the end of We Are the World, it's, they list all the artists, right? Yep. The, do you remember how this one ends? So this. Yeah, ends there was like a big thank you message from three people. From Nigel, David, and Rob. Hmm. And it's like, really? Because well, I'm pretty sure there's like 30 other people in that room. That but probably... they were thanking, I think, I think those you, three they, you think they were thanking, thanking the artists? The people who were, who did the video. Oh, whoops. That's what that thank you was about. Because those are the three that produced the video. Okay. So they were I mean, thanking they could, they like the they artists. Mentioned, they could have mentioned their names. Yeah, but see, I think that's the difference. I think that they did it because they were they wanted to do it, not because they wanted to be like known. Do you know what I mean? Like it was like a different. I think it was different. I think they because now this came out before We Are the World. This came out right. in November of '84, and they did this for the sole reason of just making money to benefit families in Ethiopia. And um, I think it was like Bob got, was thinking about it and like, oh, we should do this. Let me call my friends. And I think that's what they did. I think he just called like his friends, which would probably explain why it's um, a little bit more narrow and it doesn't have as many like women and it's not like, oh, 50-50 and we have to make sure this is happening here. It was more, I think it was more of like this guy saying, I want to do this. Let me call my friends and see who wants to do it with me. I don't think it was like for a publicity thing. I think it was because they really just wanted to make a song to raise money for these kids these families in in Ethiopia and so and I and I think that's why like the whole tone of the video was kind of fun because it's like a bunch of their friends get together and making this this video or whatever um I don't think they were doing it for that publicity whereas five months later Quincy Jones produces this thing with like all these you know as well produced video of you know the most popular you know um you know i think i think it was all united states artists possibly i think there's a few others but um it was just i it was i think it was just differently intended in my opinion and i think that's why it was like the way that it was and i think they just like let's just make a video and let's just see what we can make for money and blah 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 not as well produced (laughs) <laughs> um, but it was funny, like, so this Bono was in it, Phil Collins, Bob Geldof, obviously, he's the one that take care of it. Um, Duran Duran, George Michael Sting, um, Boy George, of course. So nice to see Boy George. I haven't seen him in a while. And, um, and of course, Cool in the Gang. Oh, my God. How bizarre, right? I don't think I noticed. It's one of those... One of these things is not like the other. Where does yeah. does cooling cool in the gang fall in here? These are all like European. Are cool in the gang, I'm assuming cool in the gang is an American. That's what band. I would assume too. Yeah. I, that's what I've always thought. I don't really know. Interesting. Um, was it? I did like the outtakes. I know you probably didn't like it because it was a different, yeah, different tone. Yeah. Um, but it, again, this one also went on way too long. It's four minutes, Christina. The end is too long. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. I don't think it needed to be as long as they, it needed to be. Truly. Um, wow. This one was 37 artists. And they had a Grammy nomination in 86. 
I, f- I didn't write what it was for, but they, 86. I think, um, we are the world. No, that couldn't be different. 85. If it came out in 84, the award would be in 85. It would have been 85. I think I, yeah. yeah. And they raised $24 million. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. So what do you say? Now we have to pick which one goes into the vault. Yeah, we do have to pick which one goes into the vault. My choice is already very clear. Yes. I bet you're not sure about mine, though, are you? I'm not sure about yours, actually. Okay. Should we do a match game? Like writing it on paper, or should we sure. just say the same? Okay. Well, you know mine, but I will write it down anyway. I have like all these like things of paper. I don't even know. All right. This is what we are saving for the vault. And by the way, just to remind people at home that this video will join the ranks of "Love Is a Battlefield," "Take on Me," "We're Not Going to Take It." It, girls just want to have fun in some other in other videos along yeah. the way. So this is a very very big deal. It is a big deal because not only are we saving this one, but the other video is going to be trashed forever, burned, destroyed, never to be seen again. And we paid a lot of money to grab that copy, that right. one copy that's left, and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna destroy totally. it at the end of the episode. You, someday, so, we'll, um, someday, someday we'll have to reveal our vault. <clears throat> yeah. It was, yeah. Maybe Ready? Call, watch, watch, okay. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> nice. Yes, we are the world. Of we course, we have to save We Are the World. Of course. We can't not save We Are the World. Um, and it wasn't that I didn't like it, I just felt like they were different feels. Yeah, that you same. Know? And um, I did love We Are the World very much. I also really liked. Um, do they do they know that it's Christmas? Oh, oh the music again. Oh jeez. All right. So anyway, in the yourself. meantime, stay home, stay safe, stay well. Um, you know, and obviously, and even if, and if you're happy to be living somewhere where they're um, lifting the stay at home regulations and all that, you know, still be careful, still be safe, and use your best judgment in yes. every situation. Absolutely. And um, thanks for listening. Yes. And until next time. Until next time.